The Swedish embassy was designed to reflect the values of openness and transparency. Even the rooftop deck is sleek, built to suggest a wooden pier at a Swedish dock. Do you ever have any problems with people diving over the edge, trying to a do a big cannonball yeah, sort of, of thing? Oh. I brought my bathing suit in case. <laughs> Deputy Chief Karin Olaf's daughter organized this little rooftop party, along with Eva Hofstrom, the ambassador's wife. Resident chef Martin Johansson has handcrafted a traditional Swedish spread, including blood pudding and reindeer. Oh, wonderful. I love good reindeer. Yeah, it's like a Swedish kebab in a way. Yeah, sure. Reindeer meat is low in fat and high in protein. It's served with lingonberries, a popular wild berry that grows all over Scandinavia. And who knew it came in a little Swedish burrito? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. There's no gaminess in this reindeer at all. You have those sweet, bright, tart lingonberries. The cooked onions get very sweet. The mushrooms, earthy and aromatic. Sweet, sour, salty, bitter. All together, like all things Swedish, designed beautifully. Stunning, very modern. There's nothing modern about the blood pudding. Chef Johansson makes it using his grandmother's recipe. It starts with pig's blood, mixed up with rye flour, chop up some bacon, some apple, some onion, lingonberry, of course, ginger, cinnamon, allspice. It all goes into a pan to bake, then cool, then sliced into the frying pan to crisp it up a little. Oh my gosh. Mm. That is as refined a version of the traditional blood sausage as I've ever eaten. The lingonberries don't give it that Swedish tilt, it's that rye flour. You get that husky sort of aroma through your nose. And rye is actually a strong enough tasting flour. I think it works better than all the other versions. It's strong enough to stand up to that metallic, tannic, bloody feeling. You know, you cut your finger and stick it in your mouth sort of taste. <laughs> but now we get to a traditional food that makes even native Swedes cringe. It's the reason we're dining outside. Most Swedes wouldn't dream of doing this indoors. <laughs> look at this, look at they're walking away. They're walking away. But it is that bad. <laughs> it is that bad. <laughs> it's bad. This is called source thrumming, sour herring. Left to rot for a full year before it's ready to eat, the gaseous buildup inside has already bent the metal can. What began as necessity for preserving food has become a national source of pride, in part because it's so ghastly. Look at you turning your head! The can literally spews its contents when open. And the most penetrating, putrid, powerful stink I've ever smelled from food rolls across the rooftops. Holy mo- so this just goes in there raw. Oh my gosh, guts included. <laughs> Fantastic. By the time I'm ready for the first bite, the entire embassy staff is lined up to watch. That's what happens on this show. Nobody's interested until the fermented fish comes out of the tin. And then everybody wants in. All right. <laughs> He smells it. Oh, oh. This is one of the rankest things I've ever smelled. Mm -hmm. This is just horrific. Hmm. <laughs> nice, isn't it? It's not nice. No. <laughs> but it will be nice. That's your old there. rotted fish. Okay. I mean, it just says it all. That's it. That's the most rotten piece of seafood I've ever eaten, and that's saying a lot. That's like licking the, the inside of an ammonia container. <laughs> Turns out few people today eat this stuff by itself. Now they tell me. They usually mix it with potato and onion. Oh, oh wonderful. Yeah. There, there's something about those ingredients that really mellow out that rotted fish flavor to the point where it's acceptably edible. I still think everybody should try it straight out the can. <laughs> Finland sits at the top of the world in Northern Europe, and the country is blessed with charming towns, forests, and hundreds of thousands of lakes. The embassy of Finland is what you might expect, clean and green. 
It also has a top secret room never before revealed to cameras until now. The building reflects the minimalist spirit of its people, and it's the only embassy in DC to be LEED certified as a green building. Giant cubes covered in copper dangle from the ceiling and serve as conference rooms. It's all tied together by a dramatic spiral staircase. But the real magic is in the back. Even though the embassy sits on busy Massachusetts Avenue just across the street from the official residence of the Vice President of the United States, you'd never know it from here. This is our backyard. It's uh, Norman Stone Park. It's fantastic, and what a great postcard, mm -hmm. love letter, architecturally speaking, to the rest yeah. of Washington, D.C., than to invest in something like this. It's remarkable. It it's, is Finland. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 This place is just awesome. We are, we are modest, but we agree. Now, on to that secret room that we've been promised to peek at. So behind this drawer, mm -hmm. we have our secret weapon. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you that this is the first time ever a TV crew has entered this place. Wow. It's where all the heavy stuff goes down? Yes. The big this, conversations. This is the place. This, this is, is the place. where it happens? It doesn't get any better. Wow. Oh, come on. You're looking at the only sauna on Embassy Row handcrafted and big enough for 12. Saunas are a big deal in Finland. They're not just a place to relax. Serious conversations happen in a sauna, and even the most reticent Finns are known to bear more than their souls. Miko Kosinen is the resident chef, and he specializes in cooking traditional Finnish foods. Some, like the licorice ice cream, are prepared especially for people coming out of a sauna. So before we eat, into the sauna we go. So much for the old adage, never let him see a sweat. The temperature in here is 190 degrees. A couple of plus-size models sitting around <laughs> sweating. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Let's just, you know, I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Steam is created by pouring water over the hot stones. Birch branches harvested here on the embassy grounds exfoliate the skin and get the circulation moving. Yeah, that's, oh, that's a feel. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That is fantastic. And the best thing about it is that after we're done with this, you're gonna turn this into a lovely salad. Oh. <laughs> Saunas help you sweat out a lot of toxins, oh, but you also lose some important stuff. So when the sauna is done, people crave foods to replace the fluids and salt they just lost. Chef Miko starts off with little fish called bleaks, heads, tails, bones, and all. Okay. Oh, my oh. It's a fatty little fish. Usually that means fishy. This is not fishy at all. It's just perfect. It definitely lets you know that it's a swimmer with fins, but it's not overwhelming. And the bones. Small enough, everything just crunches right up. Crunchy is the operative word here, even when it comes to the ice cream. Eggs, and we're gonna crumble some of these candies. These are really salty licorice. Uh, right. And it's very common in Finland. The Finnish licorice is called salmiaki. This version is a hard candy, very intensely flavored from salt of ammonia. It's wicked. And in ice cream, it's a mega dose of salt, sugar, and fat. Just what the body needs after a long sauna. That's insane. Creamy, eggy, ice cream goodness, and then that salty licorice flavor. Salted caramel ice creams are all the rage. Salted licorice, the next big thing.